Alright, day 33. Uh, as you can see, I am whipping across the waters in a boat. I'm on a boat. No, I'm not going to be singing that song today. Um, so, it occurred to me, after my uh, poor success to find lava in um, the caverns the other, the other video, I uh, remembered that there were... Now that the game has open lava pools on the surface, I went around and looked around and I did come across one. So that's what I'm headed to now. I'm returning to a lava pool. Wait, watch this. Getting out of a boat is tricky, but if you right click and jump at the same moment, you can get out. Normally if you just like, if you're in motion and you get out of your boat, you're going to like fall through the, in, through the damn boat and it's going to fly off into the water and there's a chase after it. or Worst case scenario, it's going to hit a cliff edge of, you know, the, the shore edge and shatter and you lose your boat. So to always bring your boat to a full stop if you're able. And you want to right click and jump out. Because uh, if you just right click, uh, you know, you're supposed to stand up in it. So you can jump out. Sometimes you do. Most of the time, i found I don't. So uh, I try to jump out the moment I right click and it saves me some... Uh, trouble so hopefully I'll uh, not have to worry about that but I'm headed to this pool I've already made a couple trips here to collect lava as you can see look down there see I've already taken quite a little bit of it out and I'm here to get one last trip I've actually already got um, 12 units of it back at the house stored and I came back here to get another four and uh, so that'll make 16 total, which is still, um, I don't, I need 20 eventually, uh, but for now, the 10 is all I need to build the, uh, the, um, the portal to the nether so that I can get out for the nether. And the sun is going down, so I am rushing to get back to my boat because I started this right in the evening of day 33 because I was out wandering around the other day. And uh, so, hopefully I'll be able to get back quick here, because uh, I do not want to be out here and about. As you can see, I'm missing boots and a helmet, because I got swarmed running around earlier, and uh, I ate up a bit of my gear. So, yeah. Rush, 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 rush. I need to go fix my Minecraft files. They still don't have clouds. i got to put them back. I took them out to uh, edit them out for a friend of mine, and then I never bothered to put them back in my own game. I needed a clear PNG to use so I can get rid of them in his. Uh, so yeah. I will, uh, looks kind of cool. Just, you see where I've done the water on the edges? And there's a creeper. Okay. I'm going to make a quick running jump exit. Yeah. There we go. Hey, the boat didn't shatter. All right. You can see there on the right, I've got uh, little pools of lava stored. I'm going to, uh, it's the best way to store it is just, you know, put it down on the ground and uh, save it for later. But I will be building my portal today. That's the goal to get to the nether. Um, so. Looks like I'm safe, there's no creepers about. Alright, so you see here I've already got 12 blocks of lava. And uh, those are my little water spouts. Let's go ahead and store this. So, I will of course go back to that lava pool later and get more, but it's not important right now. I've got more than I need. So let's go ahead and uh, organize my inventory and get ready to forge a uh, forge to mold some areas, and I'll show you the uh, process as I make a, a portal. So, if you, uh, I put little signs next to my uh, boxes here, if, I don't know if they were in the last video or not. I can't remember. I think they were. Uh, so, let's make a little food, because I definitely don't want to die in the nether. When I do go in, I plan on rushing in, finding my sand, and rushing out. 
because there's a lot of nasty stuff there that I don't want to spend more time than I have to because all I'm going for is the sand and when I get the sand I'll be done in the story. Uh, I can go back and deal with the nether at some other date. Um, the actual best use for the nether is the nearly unlimited supply of lava there. So once you have access, making more obsidian in the future is relatively easy. You just gotta go back, grab it, and jump back in. So, resupplying my tools since I wasted quite a bit while I was digging and running around. Yeah. I was, uh... I've been uh, playing that game I mentioned the other day. What was it called? Or, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my portal. I don't think I can put it in the house. Uh, since a portal is a square entity, it's a... I say square, it's it's an even shaped entity, so it has, you know, it's a 4x5, four by, uh, four by so it's got, you know, two width in the middle, and everything in the house is odd, it's got odd numbers, so I'm going to put it somewhere else. Uh, I've been playing this side-scroller called Trine, and uh, it's like a, uh, a physics-based, you know, traverse the world and get the end of the level kind of side scroller and you swap out the three different characters and you um, use each of their unique gifts to traverse the levels like one's a magician, one's a knight and the other one's a, a thief uses a bow and arrow and a grappling hook and whatnot so they all have their own the the, uh, the magician can make like boxes and pl uh, platforms to stand on and stuff and the knight can like you know do melee damage and as a shield, and the thief has the uh, the grappling hook, which allows the thief to like jump up to any wooden platform it can attach the grappling hook to. And it seems like a great premise for a game, uh, but all the uh, the stories and the vocals are, you know, more or less it's it's narrated, and there's like you know the base. Your narration occurs during these static loading screens basically where you're uh, traversing uh, the map like so you know it's just like a, an image on the screen map with a little like, oh, dot 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 as you're moving from one location to another and then while it's loading the next level and it's fine and all except for the fact that it's just kind of it seems like a great game and it's really pretty it's a really beautiful game it's got a lot of really nice graphics to it but it's it's very simple, and I don't mean simple like the way Minecraft is simple, I mean it's just the same thing over and over and over and over, and I mean the methodology of how you traverse the environment doesn't really change, so it just gets kind of old, and you're like, why am I still playing this game, and I uh, got to the end of the game, uh, the, like the final level, and and it's just like insanely difficult and I'm not enjoying it at all. And it occurs to me that like, why did I even play this long? And it brings back that idea of there's so many games that are just seem interesting, they, they seem beautiful, they seem relevant and it's like a good premise and you play it and it's just like they miss something, that execution isn't quite right, or you know the the, the, pro the progress of the uh, the difficulty is wrong, or the development of the characters is wrong, and you just it's like you're playing just for the sake of playing. It's like uh, it makes me think of um, like Tetris. Tetris is a brilliantly executed puzzle game. I mean, you, you play for the exact reason you play for. It just you. Uh, you're playing just to play. There's no other reason at all. You're just enjoying the puzzle factor of it all. And it works for Tetris because it doesn't try to be anything else, you know? It just does what it does, and that's what it is. And so you don't have any qualms with playing Tetris for, you know, 8 to 12 hours or, you know, however long you feel like putting up with it. So I don't have an issue with that, but this game, it kind of like harks itself as like an RPG, but it's not. It's it's a fetch quest is what it is. It's, 
Yeah, that's all you're doing. You're going from point A to point B, and you're gathering little orbs of XP. And the enemies aren't necessarily hard as much as they are just frequent and annoying. So it's like, it's there as a hindrance, not as a accomplishment factor. Like, oh, I beat these enemies. No, no, they were just there to piss you off and slow you down. That's the only reason they were there. And it's, there's so much of that these days in games, that that pointless filler, the, that let's make it take longer than it needs to to accomplish this task kind of stuff. And it's like, it harks back to, um, like, random encounters in RPGs. It's like, random encounters are the the bane of wasted time. It's just, it's, it's a false way to extend the length of a video game. It's not actual content, you're just wasting time. I mean, they can't fill the void, they can't give you more gameplay hours of real content, so they waste your time. And I come from a, a, a community uh, that got me started, really, my real step into the internet was when I started in a uh, community of RPG design creator people. Uh, this, you know, video game is called RPG Maker, and I got into it, and I got into the community of it, and it's just a whole group of people, and the whole purpose of our scenario was, it was just people that got together, they, they liked the RPG genre, and they wanted to make games, and the game I always wanted to make, that I never really got around to, because I'm just lazy perfectionist, and I can never get myself to work with the system's limitations that were built into it, and so I couldn't really enjoy the game the way I should have, or I couldn't make the game as enjoyable as I felt it should have been, so I ended up, you know, procrastinating and just being wishy-washy and everything done, but one of the main points I always had in my idea of how I wanted the game to flow is I never wanted to have random battles. It was one of those mindless things that just has no purpose other than making the player take longer to accomplish their task. And there's got to be better ways to fill a player's time. Like, real content instead of, you know, artificial content. And it's like real reason. Like there should be story. There should be exploration. There should be, you know, a reason to be and to do. And if there isn't, all you're doing is wasting time. And so it's like it's it feels shallow. Like you could have done more. You could have pushed further. You could have made better. And I don't. I hate that. They're so frequent to find that artificial extension of a game. And it's just everyone does it one way or another through mindless leveling cycles, or you know, you'll find it in um, what's the other commonly used thing? You'll find uh, you know, fetch quests or extended tutorials or you know, just stupid little things that are added into games that shouldn't be there. It's like, why am I forced to go through this when it has no purpose at all other than artificially extending the time it takes to complete the game? And I get it, you know, nobody wants to buy a video game that you beat in three hours or two hours or, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't have any replay value either because, like, you've done it. It's like, why am I going to go play it again? So you got to have... It's like an MMO. Like, MMOs are the worst example of artificially increased playtime. Um, I played Final Fantasy XI, and I just recently decided that I'm gonna, you know, give it up and, uh, like, call it quits. I don't know if I will permanently, but I'm definitely gonna wait until some new content comes out before I even consider... What do you mean I can't sleep? It's getting dark. Uh, until some new content really comes out so that I can really get more stuff, you know, real stuff, not just mindless leveling stuff out of my game. And so I don't know if they'll ever get any more, but if they do, I might come back and try it then. But until then, I think I'm just done. I mean, I've never been a fan of MMOs in general simply because of that mindless time extension way of thinking that games are. So, it's just... 
why should I have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and days and days and days just to get a slightly better weapon, or a slightly better piece of armor, or a, you know, a small increase to my stats? Like this isn't an actual accomplishment. All you're doing is making me take longer to get to something of actual value. And it's, you know, I resent it. I mean, it's like they think we're stupid. I mean, and I get it. Most people probably are stupid. I mean, otherwise, I really doubt games like WoW would be so insanely successful. But they are. And it, 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 people in general are just spoon fed this time extension gameplay. And it's so. Boring. <laughs> it's it's boring. It's like can't they come up with something better to spend my time on? I don't know. I hate artificial game extension. It just seems it's like pulling the wool over someone's eye. Like you're not really you know making a game. You're making you know a babysitter. You're making whatever. It's just. It's a flaw with the games today. That's probably been a flaw for a long time, but I mean, I can only imagine what kind of other mindless time extensions have been built into games that I'm not even aware of. Like, I try to think of games like Mario, and it's, I've always loved the Mario Saga games. Like, they always, they're so polished. Nintendo doesn't want to release a crappy Mario because it's their, you know, it's their main storyline. It's their main branch. It's just, they, they put a lot of effort into it. And like, the goal has always been really simple in Mario. It's, you know, traverse these worlds, get to the final area, save the princess. But, in a game like that, it doesn't, you know, try to fool you into thinking you're doing something you're not. You know, you know you're just traversing the world. You're not, and it, you're not traversing the world be, because there's just no faster way there. I mean, it's not like Mario's got an airship or access to teleports, although there are the occasional warps and the whistles and whatnot in the various games, but... I mean, there are occasionally faster ways to get to the end, but exploring a level in Super Mario World versus exploring a level, ex walking around a map trying to find the city you're supposed to go to in an RPG and having to face countless random encounters versus stepping on a Goomba's head are two very different things. Because even though it's kind of a mindless thing, at least in Mario, it is actual progression. You're moving towards your goal instead of being postponed from your goal. You know, that's, that's the real difference in the purpose. Are we being slowed down or are we being just given a challenge on the way there? And I imagine that balance is a really hard thing to strive for. And I'm sure a lot of games don't actually intend to just slow you down and make it take longer to get to the end. But that's kind of the way it turns out. And I'm sure a lot of game developers, even if they're not aware, don't like that kind of gameplay. They don't like being that kind of developer. They don't want to trick their players into false extensions of time. That's not what they're doing. They're, they want to give you quality. They want to give you content. But it's just not always possible. And it's unfortunate. Because I'm sure they would really love to give us real content all the time. But real life things of budgets and time frames don't always allow it. So I've got my uh, flint and steel. And uh, I grab some basic, uh, some smooth stone. I'm gonna do a little aesthetic touch-up work. Uh, I'm running close to the end here, so I think I'm gonna actually hold off on my trip into the Nether. I'll do it at the beginning of the very next video that'll come out, and then uh, we'll dash in and grab it, and then I'll get to work on building my boat dock, which is what all this has been for and what it's all been leading into. So. Today's music is by, what's the guy's name, I forget already, by Andrei Kimovich, I think I'm saying it right, 
usually pretty good with those types of uh, accents and things, so... You hear the little clicking of my mouse in the background, I'm switching tabs like, while I'm recording so I can see. Um, so let's go ahead and clean this up a little. Um, I made a flint and steel earlier, which is just literally flint and iron. So, if you ever need to make some for some reason, I didn't know how. Um, once you build your portal, uh, you'll notice I didn't put corners in the portal. You don't have to. Um, there's a lot of uh, visual representations of portals that show it as a full 4x5 rectangle. Which, you know, looks nice and all, but it's not necessary. You only have to have the walls and the bottoms. The corners are not considered part of a portal. It's just, you know, something you put in because you want to put in that part of the portal. So let's outline it here with some stone. And I'll light it up here in just a moment. And you can see the pretty, pretty pur purple portal glow. Uh, let's fill that in. Oh, uh, uh, I wanted to leave that part. What can I say? I'm a real uh, stickler for looks. I'll probably come back and clean this up quite a bit later and make some sort of nice entry motif. <laughs> uh, I like that. I like the design aesthetics of things. It brings out the, the, art, the limited artistic side of me. It's, uh, artistically inclined, not artistically capable. <laughs> Here, let's see. Let's light it up. Hope this doesn't kill my frame. Wait, actually, hang on. Let me uh, put a few more torches down first, and then I'll light it up. Then you come back later, and I'll put in some actual steps here. finding an upbeat jazz piece that felt right for this, so, let's see, here we go, let's light it up, and don't kill my friend right now. awesome, purple, cool, so yeah, that's it, I'm going to uh, go ahead and call it a day, and we will get back to it next time, so, uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again, goodbye.